Hey everybody, welcome back to Cityscape Brewing. I'm Dennis Fields, and today we're gonna to be talking about beer clarity. Is your beer crystal clear? Is it hazy or is it cloudy? Is it supposed to be? And how to make it more clear? Maybe you wanna enter your beer into a competition you want to look its best. We're gonna give you tips and tricks on how to do that pre-fermentation and post-fermentation. So as you can tell, we've got a beer here, super crystal clear, you can see right through it. In this case, this beer is a little cloudy. Sometimes beer styles are like that on purpose. Maybe it's a hazy IPA, or maybe you just have some extra sediment particles in your beer and you wanna figure out how to make this one look like this one. So uh, first, a couple of things. Uh, always enjoy a homebrew, number one rule of homebrewing. And a couple uh, pointers. Um, also, thank you for the folks at Replay Brewing. They're opening up a new brewery in Fort Mill, South Carolina. If you're in the area where you're coming to visit, Please go check these guys out. They're uh, opening soon uh, in the uh, Kingsley area, and uh, you guys should check them out. They're a good group of people. And, and third, uh, and most importantly, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. Helps me out and also uh, helps you get notified of new content. So hit that subscribe button below, and then with that, we'll get started. Uh, first and foremost, the most important thing about making beer clarity is probably your malt choice, right? So when making certain sours, I like to choose wheat, uh, wheat malt on purpose to make it look hazy. I think it comes out really cool, uh, especially when you're hop, uh, or when you're putting in fruit in the secondary, uh, it comes out kind of, really has this kind of juicy, uh, fruity look to it. And, and that's an appearance that I prefer for some of my sours. And so if you're looking at making a crystal clear beer for a competition, um, and you use a lot of, of wheat, whether that's uh, flaked wheat or whether that is uh, wheat malt, whether it's white wheat, red wheat, that's gonna have some impact on the clarity of your beer. Also items like oats and other things like that will also do that. Uh, there's also types of beer that are meant to be more hazy, hazy IPAs of course, right? And so in that case, you may not be as concerned about um, having a clear beer. And in most cases, the impact on the flavor really there's very minimal impact. And so some people probably make great beer and they have a little haze to them, no big deal. But there are a couple things that you can do to uh, clarify your beer to look more like this. Maybe you're wanting to put a beer that you really enjoy making or you do a really good job at and you're gonna enter it into a competition. Let's talk about a couple different things that you can do. First, uh, we're gonna talk about things you can do pre-fermentation. So this is during your mash and your boil process, things that are super important um, that And one of them that I just recently learned that I could be doing better is Vorloffing. And so Vorloffing is the process where you use some type of uh, container and as you're pulling your mash for the first time um, and starting to drain your mash and setting up that, uh, that nice uh, filter with your grains and, and, and creating a, uh, uh, a bed of grains on the bottom of your mash done, uh, you're pulling that first few uh, gallons of liquid through it. And some people will take and they'll take a pitcher like this and they'll fill it up and they'll be looking for solid chunks inside of that floating around. And then when that kind of stops, they put it in their, their kettle and they, and they keep moving on to their boil. And you can make really good clear beer doing that. But one thing that I actually was pointed out with a friend of mine when we were talking is I could actually be doing that more often. And as I've done my last couple of beers now, I've realized boy, it's really helped the clarity of my beer a lot by doing this a lot more. And so instead of doing two or three or four of these, you could do it 10 times over. And yeah, it takes a little extra time because you're filling up your picture. Maybe you could have a, two, a couple of these things and you're pouring it back over your mash or maybe you're recirculating with a pump, either way. But you let that Vorloff for a long time. And as you, and you'll notice if you haven't done that already, that your beer, when you, when you do that several more times, is gonna get a lot more clear. And the stuff that you're gonna be initially putting in your kettle to boil, that in itself will be the first step. The second step that I uh, do most of the time I brew beer is add either a, a Warflock tablet or Irish moss into the boil at the last 15, 10 minutes uh, left in your boil. That's gonna help grab a hold of those larger particles in the beer and settle them out. And that'll help not only right when you're starting to cool, you'll start seeing that break, uh, but also during fermentation, it'll help grab those larger particles and settle out during your uh, primary fermentation. So 
uh, Warflock tablet, uh, and I have an example of those right here. So if you don't have these, um, you can either crush them up, I just throw them right in the boil, they seem to dissolve uh, just, just well enough. And so um, you can go ahead and do that. The next thing that I do, um, and this also helps aerate your beer, is use some type of a screen uh, when I transfer from my boil kettle into my uh, fermentation vessel, so in my case, a glass carboy. And what I'll do is I'll use this, it'll catch some of the hop particles. I also use a, um, uh, when I'm doing a lot of hop additions in my beer, I'll actually use a hop spider, whether that's a mesh screen like this one, or a, a cylinder screen that sits in my boil kettle, or you can even use like a paint stringer bag uh, with a stand that sits up on the top that'll help uh, keep that hop particles out. But those tend to fall out a lot easier in fermentation than some of the grains do. So Vorloffing and the Warflock tablet are a little more important in that aspect, but getting that hop, uh, hop particles out of your beer will help clarify your beer over time too. So the next step is what you can do during fermentation. And there's a lot of speculation and a lot of, I wouldn't say controversy, but there are people on both sides of the coin of whether you need to do a secondary fermentation. And I do for 99% of my beers. And the only one I don't do a secondary fermentation for is a hazy IPA because they tend to have a little bit more, they're a little bit more susceptible to oxidation. And so uh, I do have a video on, on uh, uh, I'm going to a secondary fermentation and how to do that. So uh, that'll be in the video description below, check that out. Uh, but I always do a secondary fermentation. And a lot of times um, that's really good if you're gonna be doing dry hopping or you're gonna be uh, adding fruit or, you know, I do a sour and, and I add fruit into that secondary. So that is a, a huge thing. But you'll notice in your primary fermenter, you'll have a good uh, amount of trube at the bottom and a good amount of yeast cake. And you wanna get that off of there eventually. And then even during your secondary, if you let that sit another additional week, you're gonna have another good line of yeast and trube at the bottom of that as well. And so you, when you transfer, even though it looks fairly clear, there's a lot left to settle and condition out in your beer. And so some people are on both sides of the fence and some people go right to that, to cold crashing. And that gets us into our next step. An another option you can do is going uh, and cold crash your beer, which means you take your beer temperature and you crash it uh, to almost freezing temperatures. And that'll take uh, the cold temperature will actually help all of those particles and things fall out of the beer. And, and that also is what happens if you keg or bottle your beer and you end up putting it in the refrigerator eventually, obviously, that will also fall down to the bottom too. And so there's a couple different ways to do that. I have a video on cold crashing with the Cold Crash Guardian that helps protect oxidation for hazy IPAs. I'll have that link in the video description as well. But then maybe you get all done brewing. You, maybe you've done a secondary, maybe you've followed some of these steps and you still come out with a beer that's supposed to not be, this one has a little bit more white weed in it, but it's supposed to be clear like this one and it ends up looking like this. There are a few things that you can do uh, to clarify your beer. And one of them is using gelatin. And so you've probably heard of this before if you haven't. This is unflavored gelatin and you buy this from any grocery store, it's not anything special. And you, can, you take one of these packets essentially out of here unflavored gelatin packet, and you fill up a little measuring cup like this with about eight ounces of water, and then you pour the gelatin on the top. And then I stir that up really, really good. I use my uh, thermometer, and then you put this in for about you know, 15, 20 second, maybe 30 second bursts in the microwave, and you keep stirring that up, and then you wait uh, until the temperature in this hits about 150 degrees. And at that point, it will go from uh, looking like a cloudy mixture to a very clear mixture. You shouldn't have any, uh, you should, it almost look, should look like water, right? And so uh, the gelatin should have fully dissolved and it should look very clear in here. And so heat that up to 150 degrees. And then what you'll do is, and this is uh, for people who keg, you can't do this in a bottle, of course, um, but you can do it in a secondary. Uh, I've only done it in the keg. It works very, very well though. So what you do then is you take it off your gas, you bleed your uh, your uh, uh, pressure on the top, you take the cap off. Actually, I have a keg right here. So what you do is you'll take this, you, you pull your uh, you pull your pressure release valve, and you'll take off the cap, and then you'll take this mixture that you just made, and you'll dump that right in. Again, make sure when you hook up back up your gas and you start filling it up with CO2 again, you bleed the extra oxygen back out. But then I would let this sit for about 48 hours. Um, some people say in about 24, but really 48 hours, give it some time. 
Um, and then uh, the first time you pour a beer out of that uh, from your tap, you're gonna wanna kind of pitch the first uh, pint or two because all of that gelatin will grab a hold of those suspended particles in there and it'll drop it out to the bottom and you'll pull that gelatin out along with that gunk uh, in the first couple of pints. But then eventually it'll start looking like this. It clears up really, really well. The third and last thing, uh, if you still have a, a beer that looks fairly hazy, is time. Uh, in time, most beers will fall out. Even uh, beers that are meant to be hazy, they use a lot of, of wheat in. Over time, if you leave them long enough, they will drop out those particles and you actually end up with fairly clear beer. Even with high, hazy IPAs, will get less hazy. And with uh, beers that I've done with a lot of white wheat, some of that will even drop out and ends up being crystal clear beer if you leave it long enough. I tend to drink mine faster, so <laughs> it doesn't last that long. But that's the last thing uh, is just give it some time. If you have, especially if you're bottle conditioning, you can let it sit for a couple of months and, uh, and let it do its thing. Um, and so those are some tips and tricks about uh, how to make your beer look a little bit more clear. Um, you can also use you know filters on pumps and other things, but these are basic things that most home brewers can do, especially those who keg can do um, and are doing all grain brewing. But again, if you're uh, wanting to put in a competition and clarity is important to you, I would do several of these steps. I almost always do the Vorloffing. I almost always add a Warflock tablet to my, uh, uh, to my beer brewing process. And then at the end, um, I always do a secondary. And so I'm hitting three. And then at the end of the day, if you still need to add gelatin, there's that option at the end. So that might pull out some of the, um, the hoppy flavors or aromas that you have too. So I would tend to try to do some of those other things in the front end, but um, hopefully that helps you make clear beer. Please, as always, like, subscribe, and share these videos with your friends. It's all about helping people brew better beer. And then also uh, leave any questions, comments, tips uh, in the comment section below. Uh, I appreciate the feedback. So with that, cheers and happy brewing.